In today's video, we will be building a drawing board based on the Adafruit Neo Trellis. We will be using four Neo Trellis boards, an Itsy Bitsy M4, and a custom printed case. Let's get started. I started by filing the edges of all of the circuit boards so they would fit together nicely. After making sure the boards fit nicely together, I started soldering all of the middle pads together. The solder on the pads was not sticking together like it was said in the instructions, so I used a small piece of wire on each set of pads and soldered that, making for a total of 20 wires. After that, I flipped the boards over and put a little blob of solder in between each set of boards in order to hold them together nicely because they were bending a little bit at the wires. Then finally I put a little bit of solder on some of the address pads in order to make it so each board had a unique address. Next I pulled out my 3D printer and I printed and printed and printed many different cases as I kept redesigning. While I was printing all the cases, I went ahead and developed the software on the Adafruit Halloween, and just to show you that it does work. Next, I took a file to the case because the holes were just a little bit too small for the button pads. I think this was either due to the filament or the 3D printer. I gotta be at this a while. I don't know if you remember this brush from when I did my Commodore 64 cleaning, but it comes in handy for cleaning off dust off of here too. This is a lot of the filing that I did. I've been filing here for three or four hours now. Anyway, I got it so it fits. Need to clean this out. all this filing dust off. This is like half of it. The other half ended up on my lap. After I've done that, I will go ahead and finish assembling it. For this project, I prototyped this using the Halloween, but I plan on, after I solder some wires onto the Itsy Bitsy here, putting the program on here to drive that. I am using a, basically it's a Stemma cable that I created myself using some existing connectors that I already had and that I got off of something that I took apart. And this one here was actually a lot longer and I just cut it down with an X-Acto knife. Um, but the pen spacing and everything was the same. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and attach the wires to one of these eight solder pads, most likely. To create this project, I actually ended up going through a number of different iterations. This is one of the first ones I did, and the whole spacing was great. I didn't need to file it or anything. Um, I think, and then, the remaining ones were done in a black PLA filament, whereas the the white one was done in a white PLA filament, and there was the same brand and everything, but for some reason the black just was not printing as nicely, but I really wanted it in black, so that's why I needed to file it. I could have just tried using the white. Also, it could have been the Creality 3D printer, which currently is the only one I had that was going to print something big enough and watch out for a video because I'm going to upgrade my rep wrap so that I will be able to do it on that as well um, and then I can actually test to see if it's the filament or if it's the printer uh, as you can see I went through a number of different iterations um, I showed you that case this was another one I found off of Thingiverse. It didn't quite work. I think it was meant for, well, it was meant for a Leonardo, which they don't sell anymore, but I think a Metro M4 would have done the job. I just didn't have one. Also, it didn't seem to be where it would hold the 
circuit board up against there. So I went ahead and I made my own design and I went through different iterations. Uh, I started off trying to just do like where the solder pads were and the headers and they were off a little bit. And I settled on going for a more open design. It didn't use up as much plastic, so good on that. I went with a three piece design. Basically you put the keypads in, you put the circuit board in. This kind of has a little bit of an inset so it'll hold it and it'll protect the itsy bitsy M4 and that goes there and since the itsy bitsy doesn't have a battery port it's just going to run off of USB power. This was actually more of a test print and I made this a little bit too long although I'm going to get, be putting this model on Thingiverse so you can print it. It'll have it at a much better size for here and I will link it in the description as well. So to hold it I'm actually going to take the board and hot glue it in once I have the wire soldered on and then this is going to fit over this and keep the itsy bitsy from touching the other thing plugging in the USB port and push it back so let's go ahead and solder this up started off by putting a little bit of solder on each of the pads and then I soldered each of the wires to the pads on the Neo Trellis and then I soldered the ground wire to the ground on the Neo Trellis the SCL to the SCL, the SDA to the SDA and the interrupt to digital pin 10 at this point I wasn't quite sure where to wire the voltage input up to so I decided to try uploading my program and seeing if it ran. I connected the ITSY M4 Express up to my computer. Since I wanted to load the latest version of CircuitPython Express I pressed the reset button twice and it showed up as the ITSY M4 boot drive. I had already downloaded CircuitPython 4.0 and I put a link to it in the description if you want to download it yourself. To copy it onto the ITSY M4, I just drag the UF2 file onto the drive. As soon as it copied, the drive disappeared and a new drive called CircuitPy appeared. The next step was to install the library and to do that I simply downloaded it which I included a link in the description and unzipped it and copied the lib folder onto the CircuitPy drive. And finally to get the drawing board program onto the CircuitPython you can download it in a link in the description and copy the drawing board.py program onto the CircuitPython drive and simply rename it code.py. One thing you'll want to be sure of is to make sure the addresses for the Neo Trellis boards match your actual configuration. After that you should be good to go. After uploading the programs and checking to make sure the settings are correct, I connected the voltage input wire to the 3 volt and things seemed to be working fine. So I went ahead and soldered it. At first the code was not quite working correctly and after a little bit of trial and error I finally had it uploaded and tested all the buttons just to make sure it was working correctly. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. It must have not uploaded it correctly or something. Let's go and assemble this bad boy. That might take a while to heat up. Alright, let's go ahead and put these in here while that's heating up. Go ahead and clean this up. Fairly confident that these should go in there well. You want to make sure you line them all up the same direction. Uh, 
was trying to get the all the elastomer pads here to go into these holes. They're all lined up perfectly. Let me go ahead and place this here. Go ahead and line everything up. I have not test fit these screws, so I'm really hoping they work. These are M3 by 14 millimeter screws that I'm putting in here. They're just some extra parts I have from my 3D printer. Okay, this hole isn't lining up. Try my three millimeter drill bit, and yes, these are metric drill bits. However, the closest imperial one, or whatever it's called, is going to be a one eighth inch. Yeah, this is not working. Hmm. Sometimes the order of the corners you do matters. I should have realized there was going to be some alignment issues. I really hope I'm not drilling into this board. But at least if I am, it's not drilling fast. Okay. Let's try it out. It lights up. I think the um, keypad is not quite lined up with the board, but I'll have to play around with that. But there we go. So it'll cycle through between different colors. And then it'll go to white, and then it'll go back to red. So there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. But you can add more if you want. I was just trying to make it fairly simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw something for you. Unfortunately, while working on this, the Itsy Bitsy M4 died on me. Most of the Adafruit products I don't have problems with. But fortunately I have a Itsy Bitsy M0 and so I'm going to try and use that. It's not as powerful, but since the hollowing is based on the M0, it should work. Yeah, for some reason as soon as you plug it in, no, none of the lights light up anymore. I mean, there's like a little tiny flash on here, but that's it. So let's go ahead and try programming this one. And this one's fine. I don't know. It might have been a defective one or something. Either that or you're not supposed to put hot glue on it. Okay, let's solder this on. Okay, this is not working. Having a wire pull out while trying to solder and having the solder fill in the through hole, I decided to get out the helping hands. Well, that actually was helpful. This time, instead of soldering the voltage into the 3 volt pin of the Itsy Bitsy, I decided to try soldering it to the voltage in of the Itsy Bitsy. In hindsight, I believe having all four of the Neo Trellises using the 3 volt regulator on the Itsy Bitsy may have been a little bit too taxing. 
So the reason the M4 probably stopped working was because I overloaded the voltage regulator. So I want to just put a little squirt of hot glue in each corner. And there is a little Christmas tree drawing for you. Um, yeah, feel free to modify the code and, and improve upon it. But that gives you a basic drawing program. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. If you are already subscribed, then welcome back. Be sure to like and if you liked the video and share it to some of your friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Yeah.